What do you think baton twirlers do? I think baton twirlers are like more like entertainment for other sports during halftime shows. It's very hard. I've tried it before. And it's very difficult, so I can appreciate everything they do. I think they learn routines, and they have to throw their batons up in the air really high while dancing and try to catch them. I know that they do some dance, and they do awesome tricks with the baton. It's an athletic sport, and you throw the baton up in the air. Just a bunch of spinning. Fantastic eye and hand coordination with the stick. I think it's a dance-like activity that they use a stick. They practice, they perform, they compete at competitions, and they go to show their support at, for other teams. I know they have their own events, but they also like support the school and do like halftime shows and that kind of stuff. Baton twirling is a lot different than what people actually make it out to be. A lot of times when they say, oh, so you're like a cheerleader? It's, it's a lot different from cheerleading or dancing. And so what a lot of people think of baton twirling is, oh, you march in a parade and, you know, throw it up sometimes. But major arts are really a lot more than that. We, in the high school, perform for an organization called NEMA, which is New England Major Association. And in this league for baton twirling, we have a bunch of different teams from all different towns, and we compete for five weeks. And the criteria that we're, the judges look for are design of the routine, costumes, props, and how well your routine and choreography goes with the music. And then from that, they pick a winner for each week, and then we have an overall winner at championships, which happens at Brockton High School. Yeah, yeah it's a lot more work than I think most people think it is, too, because like I feel like I say I'm a majorette, and people kind of like laugh, and they're like, oh, oh, oh yeah, you, you twirl for the football team, right? And I'm like, Oh, well, I do a lot more than that. Like, outside of it, we put in hours and hours. Some, like, girls do, like, solo and other things like that. So it's like all of us put in a lot of time and energy into it, and we compete just like any other sport. Well, for NEMA, there's four levels offered. Novice, which is for people who are just starting out or have no prior experience with baton twirling. And then once people have graduated from Novice and shown the coaches that they are capable of more, they're allowed to move to Class B which is a step up from novice and they can do harder tricks in their routine and it's a little longer for them to perform. And then after class B is class A and what class A is is the kids who are intermediate to early advanced and these kids are preparing for the, the biggest level or the most advanced level which is open class where a majority of our high school baton twirlers are. Yeah, people yeah. hear baton and they think, oh, you go outside and you throw her on a metal stick and sometimes you light it on fire. But <laughs> <laughs> Casual. <laughs> but it, in reality, it's so much more than that. Like, there's so much physical activity involved along with, like, you have to know what you're doing or you are going to hurt yourself. It's like a lot of mind and body work all rolled up into one thing together. So when I was younger, when I first started twirling, I started twirling at a studio called Twirl Town USA. And so that's where I learned all my basic skills and I also started to compete um, at local competitions. So when you're younger and you're in elementary school or middle school, there's no, there's no half time for football or um, really parades, you have to join a studio. So that, that was the studio that I joined as I got to high school, then I got to do the halftime shows and the parades, which is what the town sees, is the, the high school twirlers. So in MBTA there are many different events, such as team events, there is also two baton, three baton, and flag. There are also solo events, there is also an extra when you march to a certain pattern, in an X, that's why it's called an extra. And there's also a rhythmic twirl when you set your routine to a certain type of music. And lastly, there's also duets and trios. So it's a lot different and it has a lot more elements than what people make it out to be, which is just marching in a parade. I'm McKenna, I'm a freshman at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, and I've also been twirling for 12 years. My name's Julianne Page, and I've been twirling for 14 years. And I'm Jillian Page, I've been twirling for 11 years. And we're cousins. Yeah. <laughs> and we're my sisters. sisters. I would definitely say that twirling's made our family closer, um, especially with my aunt, my aunt Tracy, my aunt Corey. Um, seeing them at practice every day. Um, twirling's been a basically like 
what our family has been like, not really based on, but that's what like our family has been about. Like it's all been about twirling. It's, it definitely rules your life. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely think that twirling has made our family as a whole closer just because it definitely brings in something in common. And, yeah, um, that's what I was to yeah. <laughs> it's a major thing in our lives that is like what we have in common, and it's really what we can bond over. My aunt had mentioned, oh, you should do baton twirling classes. And so I think if my aunt wasn't a baton twirler, I would have never known what it actually was. Having a, my older sister be a baton twirler did inspire me to follow in her footsteps. I would always go to her practices because she needed to watch me and nobody else was home. And I just picked up a baton and the passion like started. If it wasn't for our aunt or if it wasn't for my mom's also a coach, then I probably wouldn't have been in the program. One opportunity that um, I like to talk about is um, the Rose Bowl Parade. So um, because we are part of the the marching band, the marching band got um, invited specially to march in the Tournament of Roses parade. So that's a parade that's um, it's done every year on New Year's and it's leading up to the Rose Bowl. So that was a really cool opportunity. With MVTA, we've gotten so many opportunities to travel. For example, I've been to St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. I've also been to Florida, Georgia, Texas, North Carolina, South Carolina, Connecticut, New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine, as well as competing here in Massachusetts for our regional competition. So I've, I've gotten so many opportunities to travel all over the country and make so many new friends in the sport of baton twirling. We got to perform in Disneyland. We did um, a parade through the park and it was honestly, it was so fun to see all, really the little, cool. all the little kids, like so excited to see us. And it was like, they, they honestly looked up to us and it was like mm -hmm. when we had to like stop and do like our performance, it was, I was right in front of a kid. And the whole time she was just like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And I was like, like it's, it's those things that make you think that like you're inspiring somebody else. And it was to do something in Disney where it's so magical, it was, it was great. I think my ultimate favorite has to be my yearly trip to AYOP, which is our nationals, which is located in South Bend, Indiana at Notre Dame University. There's people from all over the country and then sometimes even all over the world who compete at this competition. Your first time twirling out on a field is so amazing in front of all those people and having the marching band behind you, it's, it's such an amazing um, moment. And so I think I was really, really excited to see McKenna experience that. I was like, oh, she's gonna have so much fun. <laughs> Twirling has probably meant like everything to me just because I was just practically born into the program. I was at practices before I was even born with my mom and then I just sort of grew up with the program so it, it taught me everything I know. Twirling's really taught me um, how to be confident and it's definitely um, a social aspect of my life too. I've made a lot of my friends um, through twirling. I twirl five to six days a week, most weeks. And that's where I see all my friends. That's where I've met many of my friends and we've all just been so close for so long. Twirling's meant everything to me. I've been doing it since I can remember. And my mom did it, so carrying it on from, you know, what she did as a kid, it's been really great. <laughs> Twirling has impacted my life quite a lot. I spend the majority of the hours of my week. When I'm not in school, I'm pretty much twirling on open. I've learned so many life lessons from twirling that I'm very grateful for, such as dedication, teamwork, and perseverance. Because some days in the gym, when you hit yourself, it's really hard to keep going. But when you finally catch that trick that you've been practicing, it just it feels really good. Twirling's, like she said, been my entire life. I started when I was six. And it's really sad that I'm a senior and it's coming to a close. The twirling has meant so much to me. And the both of us. The both of us, yeah. And honestly, I don't think neither of us are actually going to let it go. Not yet. Well, I won't let it go. As you can, you don't need a friend.